Hi, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of filter inverting. And we're going to start with the same setup as last time, a bandpass filter running in parallel with the original signal, both mixed together at unity gain. And the result is a bell-shaped EQ boost of almost exactly 6 dB. Why 6 dB, you might ask? Because at the cutoff frequency, we have unity gain and zero phase shift. So this specific frequency is still exactly the same as the source. When they're added together, the amplitude of the waveform doubles in the same way that 1 plus 1 equals 2, and a doubling of the amplitude means 6 dB of gain. OK, so what do you think will happen if I pop open the output section for Pro-Q3 and flip the polarity for just the filtered signal? I'll give you a moment to think about it. OK, if you said it will turn into a 6 dB cut instead of a 6 dB boost, then you're clever, but you're still wrong. In fact, we get a hard notch with infinite attenuation at the cutoff. Infinite attenuation? Really? Well, again, the filter doesn't change anything at that one specific frequency it's tuned to, but we're now subtracting it instead. And of course, 1 minus 1 always equals 0. Now, while we've got the output section open, notice what happens if I reduce the gain of the filtered signal. That hard, infinite notch smoothly morphs into a gentle EQ cut. Of course, we can also turn the gain the other way and boost the filtered signal above unity. Perhaps unexpectedly, this starts to flatten out the frequency response again. At plus 6 dB, we're more or less back to flat again. Be aware, however, that the frequency we're filtering is now flipped in polarity. If I switch to show the phase response, we see a 180 degree phase shift at the target frequency. So we've created an all-pass filter. This is likely to be harmless, but also probably pointless. I can't think of any reason you'd want to do this, so I'm going to suggest you do as I do and keep the filtered signal at or below unity gain when inverting it like this. So before we move on, let's have a practical example of this in action. Here's some classic DMX drum samples running from NI battery. These samples could definitely use a cut in the mid-range around the 5 or 600 hertz mark. But instead of EQing the drum bus, as I might normally, I'm going to send all my drum channels to a parallel bandpass filter with the polarity flipped. And the result is a hard notch, as predicted by Plugin Doctor. It's a bit too extreme, to be honest, but that's not a problem. I can just turn it down a bit, and it becomes a gentle cut instead. Let's get a bit more adventurous, however. I'll put the fader back to Unity to restore the hard notch, but then add a compressor instead. I'm a bit fussy about the type of compressor I add, however, not so much regarding the flavour of compression, but more to do with the control scheme. I'll avoid the T-Rex compressor, for example, not because it's not a great compressor, in fact I've got one on my mix bus, but because it has a fixed threshold topology with input and output gain controls, this makes it really awkward to figure out where unity gain is, and I really want to get back to exactly unity gain when the compressor fully releases. I'll avoid all my 1176 emulations for the same reason. The Waves H comp is also ruled out because you can't turn off the automatic gain compensation, although that's not going to stop me putting an affiliate link down below. But any compressor with a threshold control and the option to manually control the makeup gain will work fine. I'm going with something that can eat the transients effortlessly, because we're not just inverting the filter now, we're also inverting the dynamics processing. Whenever the compressor turns the gain down, that hard notch will turn into a gentle cut. So the dynamics of this 500 Hz region are moving in the opposite direction, and we've created a downward expander. Or more than an expander, really. With the makeup gain at Unity, we return to a hard notch whenever the compressor releases. So this is more like a hard gate for that frequency. 
This is a great way to retain some of the vintage mid-range thump in drum sounds like these, while still tightening up and decluttering that boxy region and creating more space for other parts. Of course, we can create a subtler version of this by simply turning down the filtered signal again. Now the gain never returns to unity, so we never get the hard notch. Instead, the response varies from a gentler cut to a harder cut, and we get gentle downward expansion of that region. This technique isn't only useful on drums. It can work very well on stuff like acoustic guitar, which can sound thin without some lower mid-range, but can quickly clutter up that region if you're not careful. We can also do the opposite in terms of dynamics, however. Let's think about that part of the song where everything is in together, and the mid-range starts to build up and become overpowering. In this case, it's the lower mids, around 300 hertz, that are getting carried away. So let's tune a nice, broad, gentle bandpass filter to that frequency, running on a parallel channel, and with the polarity flipped. And I'll send it anything that's got any content at all in that region. In this case, I'm sending from subgroups, so it's going to get everything except drums. We don't want anywhere near a hard notch in this case, so I'll turn the filter down a good deal to start with and create a gentle low-mid scoop instead. And then I'm going to add a downward expander with a gentle ratio of around 2 to 1, or perhaps a touch higher. Again, we're inverting the dynamics processing as well as the filtering, so this becomes gentle downward compression. The resulting cut will be gentler when there's less energy in that region. And the parts you send to this channel will all start to interact with one another in that frequency band. Listen to the difference when I take this channel out of the mix. The low mids get all congested and boxy sounding. Now let's put it back in. Lovely. All right then, so the opposite of a bandpass filter is a notch. And perhaps not surprisingly, the opposite of a notch is a bandpass filter. This works fine, even in zero latency mode. So what's the opposite of a low pass filter? A high pass filter, of course. And the opposite of a high pass filter is a low pass filter. And it doesn't matter how steep you set the filter, or what cue setting you use, as long as, and this part is important, you're using linear phase mode. Linear phase filters will always invert perfectly and give you the exact opposite. The pass band becomes the stop band, and the stop band becomes the pass band, and there's no phase shift to complicate the issue. Awesome. So again, before moving on, let's think about some practical applications. First of all, this can be useful when constructing crossovers. No need to calculate a separate high-pass filter when you can just subtract the low-pass filter from the full-range signal instead. As an extra bonus, if you use this method, your separated low and high bands are guaranteed to mix back together to create exactly the original signal, in the same way that x minus y plus y equals x. I've shown this method in a previous video, which is a bit Reaper-specific, so I won't repeat myself here. But it can also be useful as an interesting and different way to introduce drastic filtering for certain parts of the mix or certain parts of the song. Here, for example, is a notch filter, set as steep as Pro-Q3 can make it, in linear phase, of course, and with the polarity flipped. And now, any channel I send to that filter will be hard bandpass filtered, with exactly the opposite response. This gives us an easy way to filter specific parts of the mix without them all necessarily having to be routed to the same subgroup. In this case, I'm sending everything except that deep bass part. And as a bonus, that means I'm safe to break the no reverb on bass rule, which I like to do at every opportunity. Anyway, I can now bring this filtering in and out simply by automating the level of the filter channel. 
And the transition between hard filtering and flat is just gradually decreasing shelving EQ. Very natural and smooth sounding. Okay, let's grab the bull by the horns and talk about inverting minimum phase filters. Here's a 12 dB low pass filter in zero latency mode. And here's what we get when we turn it upside down. Well, yes, it's kind of a high pass filter, but it's not a good mirror image of the original low pass filter. What's with this weird resonant bump at the cutoff? You could build a crossover like this, and it would basically work. The low and high bands would still recombine to recreate the original signal perfectly. But the lumpiness of the high pass filter will start to re emerge whenever there are gain differences between the bands. And that resonant bump might cause unwanted behavior in dynamics processes like compressors. It gets worse with steeper filters. 24 dB filters, which are pretty standard for crossover duties, produce a vicious 6 dB spike in the inverted response. And if you go any higher, you can expect weird notches to appear as well. There are ways to design minimum phase crossovers that avoid all these issues. So filter inverting tricks like this are rarely used. With one important exception. If I go the other way and set the filter to a 6 dB slope, now we get a perfect ideal inversion. A one pole low pass filter will invert to create a perfect one pole high pass filter. And if I reduce the gain of the filtered signal, it turns into a low shelf cut. Don't underestimate how useful this can be. Okay, final example. Here's a big deep bass part. And notice how it's competing with the kick drum. Every time the kick drum hits, the low end of the mix gets muddy and confused. Plus, we're kind of losing the low end of the kick, which sounds a bit flappy and weak. Okay then, parallel channel with a one pole 6 dB low pass filter and the polarity flipped. A note, zero latency mode, no linear phase required. And I'll send that bass part to this filter. And now the bass part is high pass filtered. We've achieved a couple of important things. We can hear the low end of the kick clearly and that part is thumping again. We've tightened up the whole mix by avoiding that excessive boom on every kick drum. And the gentle one pole high pass filter that we've created for the bass part is rolling off very smoothly without changing the basic character of the bass part. The big price we paid, however, the bass isn't deep enough anymore. I miss that powerful deep fundamental that we had without the filter. No problem, I'll add a gate to the filter channel which I'll sidechain from the kick drum. Now we're only subtracting that low pass filtered signal when the kick drum hits. So the bass part ends up filtered briefly for every kick drum, then goes back to flat as soon as the gate closes. Incidentally, this is about the only situation where regate's infinite attenuation is actually optimal. Usually I reach for something else because this one lacks a range control. But actually, infinite attenuation means we return to perfectly flat whenever the gate is closed. Of course, the maximum 100 dB range available in Pro-G will be plenty, and you'll never hear that difference. But we might as well use the optimal option if it's available. Let's run through that again quickly so you can listen to the difference. Here's the original balance with no filtering. Here's the filtering, but without the gate. And here with the gate in as well. OK, I think I'll leave it there for now. Will there be another part? Perhaps. I do have more to say, but I fear it will only benefit fellow Reaper users. I'll have to think about it. Thanks for watching.